Tuesday. My name is Rob Carver and I'm an Applications Engineer here at CamLogic. Tech Tuesday is our free weekly 30-minute tips and tricks webinar. And today's topic is, topic is uh, geometry creation for CAM using synchronous modeling. But first, let's familiarize everyone with CamLogic. CamLogic has been in the CAD CAM CAE space for over 35 years. The company was established 16 years ago, initially focused on CAM, servicing mainly the tool and die shops in the area. As the market has evolved, CAM logic has evolved. Interestingly, working our way backward from manufacturing to the conception of the idea or design. Because we started toward the end of the process and worked our way to the beginning, CAM logic has the fundamental knowledge of what has to be done to assure that each step of the process will result in a product that will actually work or fit into the next phase of development. CAM logic has chosen to represent software and tools that enable our customers to fulfill the full cycle of product development. We consider ourselves integrators and partners for our customers, not just resellers. CAM logic employs a three-legged stool strategy. We partner with Siemens, offering the complete integrated Siemens portfolio for design, machining, analysis, and data storage and retrieval. We partner with 3D Systems for 3D printing and rapid prototyping, and Steinbeckler white and blue light scanners in Creaform for 3D scanning for inspection and quality. Now that you've heard a bit about CAM logic, let's move on to today's topic. Geometry creation for CAM using synchronous modeling. As CNC programmers, we normally get the part to be machined from the design staff or a customer. However, this in a print is usually all we get. We're pretty much on our own when it comes to fixturing, creating drive geometry, blank or stock geometry. If you machine castings, you may be fortunate enough to get a casting model along with a finished part, but not always. You may have to create your own uh, to use as blank geometry, or you may have to design the mold, which is usually the hardest part, creating core. Synchronous modeling simplifies many of the design tasks we're faced with as camsters, so let's see how this might work. Let me bring up my model here. Um, yep, everybody should be seeing that. Okay, I've got just a, you know, just a, it's like a pipe plan. This is a very simple casting. Um, nothing really special or complicated about this. Um, but we're going to, you know, we, we, we're going to, as a CAM programmer, I'm going to have to machine some, some faces. I'm going to have to put some holes in here, mill out a bore, you know, maybe do a little bit of work down here in the bottom, turn it around, drill a couple holes here, you know. So this might, this might be a good four-axis four axis job, um, you know, do it in one setup, one fixturing. But... I'm going to need some. I'm going to need a, a casting geometry uh, to set up as my as my casting stock, uh, my blank geometry, if you will. Um, so one of the things that we might want to do is go into our synchronous technology, our synchronous modeling tools here. Um, the first thing I want to do is if I use a Control L, bring up my layer settings. There we go. I'm just going to make layer 5 here, my work layer. Okay. Then I'm going to go into insert. I'm going to do an associative copy, extract some geometry, this body. And I'm going to make sure that my hide original is, is uh, checkmarked. Okay. Hit OK. And if I look at my part navigator, I see everything here is kind of grayed out, and the only thing that's really bold is this extracted body that I just created. Okay, and just for grins, let's uh, let's change the color of this a little bit. Um, let's make it a little bit different color. Let's make it like a kind of a teal color or something of that sort. Okay? All right. Now 
we got a nice teal color there. So one of the first things I want to do, I want to go in and delete some some faces here under the fa delete face. I've got two options. I got face, or I got hole. So if I select hole, I can go in, select my holes, get rid of those. Okay. I can apply. I can also do this. Do these holes here. Okay. Now I don't want to get rid of that hole just yet, but what I do want to do is I want to resize it. Okay. So if I go in and hit that one, I see that it's a one-inch hole, but I want to for my casting, I want to give myself some stock. So let's make it uh, you know, three quarter inches. Okay. See how that changed? Do the same thing here. I want to give myself some stock there, so I'll make that a little bit smaller. Make it a quarter inch smaller. All right. And these are, you know, this might just be the rough cast opening. You know, maybe this is a, you know, looks like a pipe flange of some sort. So there's, there's, I don't need to change those. Okay. But what I do need to do is go in and move some faces here. Okay. So I'll select that one, select that one, and with my face finder, okay, it selected the symmetrical faces. All right. So if I want to give myself a little bit of stock on those faces, give myself a uh, hundred thousandths or so. Okay, and move those out. I'm going to do the same thing with this face here. Give myself about a hundred thousandths. Okay. Matter of fact, probably want to move that one a little bit. Give myself some stock on that flange. Okay. And get rid of these chamfers too. I don't know, not the whole dummy. I want the face. Sometimes you gotta pay attention to what you're selecting, what your options are. Okay. I mean you can play with this thing. I mean it, this actually gets to be fun after a while. Okay. Okay, so there's basically that would be my that would be my uh, rough stock dimension. Now I could I could save this as a, or use this in in my uh, uh, work piece as my blank geometry. Okay, but um, let's say I've got to uh, actually create the mold to make this casting, and, and part of the hard part of, of mold creation is, you know, we need a core for this thing. Okay. So again, let's let's do the control. Let's do the control. I'll bring up my my uh, layer settings. This time, make six my work layer. Okay. Again, I'll do an associative copy. Now you can use uh, you can use uh, you know your assemblies uh, and and and. Uh, Make these uh, make this an assembly. That's kind of how I I might prefer to work, especially if it's going to be something kind of complicated. But I'm going to go in and extract my geometry again. Hit that body. Okay. Again, I'm going to make sure that my height original is is check marked. Hit OK. Verify this. That now my extracted body that I made earlier with all the deleted phases are, are hidden and now I have just this extracted body here. Okay. And just for grins, we'll uh, uh, change the color of this one. Make it a make it a nice bright orange. Okay. Wow. Nice and bright. Okay. So now I'm going to extract my cores. 
So I'm going to go back into the delete face again. Okay. And instead of single face up here in my uh, options, I'm going to use region faces. Okay. Now the note says up here, select seed face for the region. So it, select any of the outside faces that you want. Now we select boundary faces. Okay. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to select that face, that face that face, that face, okay? And, and, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm, I'm going to delete. Th these, are the, these are the, it's going to save anything within those regions. And it's going to delete everything outside of those regions. So now the only thing is you got to make sure you hit mouse button too, your center mouse button. All right, now you see what our results are. And there's my core. Now the nice thing about this is I discovered that, hey, wait a minute, I got a little bit of extra geometry I didn't realize I had down on that bore. Okay. So at this point, seeing so this is my core, I want to go in and uh, I want to delete those. I'm going to delete this little extra ridge in here and make a metal note, but I've got to figure out how I'm going to machine that in my so I mean there's there's some advantages of doing this. Okay, I discovered but I've got an extra feature to machine in there, okay? And so now I can go through, I can move my faces again. And again, it selects my symmetrical face. And this time, I'm going to give myself oh, a half inch. Because I'm going to put my, uh, you know, I might even give myself an inch, I don't know. You guys that design castings, you know how much you need. Okay, because what you're going to do is you're going to put your key fe you're going to put your key features in on these faces. Okay, and maybe even on this core here, I want to give that an inch. Okay, so there's the cores for my for my casting. It's just a matter now. I can come back in. Uh, let's do this. Let's uh, let's uh, edit, show and hide, show all. Okay. Edit object display. So here's my here's my core. Here's my finished part. Here's my here's my um, part that I could use to uh, to uh, make the cavity for my coat and my drag. Okay, I've got pretty much everything I need there to start designing my mold. Plus, I've got my machine my machining uh, uh, model there too. So, synchronous technology is. I mean, this is this is a fantastic thing. I, it, it's one of the one of the slickest little uh, tools that I've ever seen, um, and uh, we've got it in NX. So that pretty much concludes what I have here. Um, you know, obviously we can go in and we can do some more modeling here to get at the rest of our design features for our for our cope and drag, or we can go in and out and start making our machine cutter path on this part. But that's pretty much all I was going to show you today. Um, so I will return to my uh, PowerPoint. There we go. OK. And here at CanLogic, we, we can't emphasize enough the importance of training to get most the most out of today's technology, like synchronous modeling. Um, it's well documented that training helps improve the speed of use, increases efficiency, provides faster problem solving, uh, problem resolution, and leads to fewer support calls, all of which positively affect company productivity, your return on your investment, and the bottom line. At CamLogic, we offer a wide variety of hands-on, instruction-intensive courses for users at every level. 
Training is available at the on-site location of your choice or at one of our training labs located throughout the Midwest. For more information or to register, please visit our website. Today's webinar can be found on YouTube, usually within 24 hours of the broadcast. And check out CAM Logic on YouTube for past webinars as well. Thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or call me at any time. Be sure to visit our website at www.camlogic.com. We can also be found on LinkedIn, Blogger, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This concludes today's edition of Tech Tuesday. Thanks again for tuning in and have a great day.